It's about um, quarter to five in the morning. <clears throat> Yesterday, I went to see Martin Scorsese's new film, Silence. And I've been awake for about half an hour, <laughs> uh, just like wanting to talk about it. <clears throat> um, I did a Scorsese series uh, some time ago, um, which wrapped up uh, early 2011. Um, and uh, I apologize uh, for those of you who have been waiting for me to do a review on The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, which came out three years ago. Three years is a long time in which I could have made a, mo a video about that film, but I never did because I've, after seeing it twice, I really just don't like it. <laughs> um, never really liked that movie all that much. It's entertaining. You know, it's it's funny, um, but uh, yeah, I, I I really don't know why it exists other than the fact that Martin Scorsese is good friends with Leo DiCaprio, and Leo wanted to make that movie, and he asked Marty to do it. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's complicated, but um, Silence, of course, is a movie that uh, took you know, a little bit longer for Scorsese to make, presumably because the subject matter is seemingly so much less commercial uh, than a lot of his other pictures, which isn't surprising in the least. Not in the least. Um, it's based on a novel. The novel takes place in uh, the 1600s. Uh, the main characters are a pair of uh, Portuguese, Portuguese Jesuit priests um, who travel to Japan to look for a mentor of theirs. Um, I can't remember the name of Adam Driver's character. Adam Driver, of course, played Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens. Um, he is one of the priests. Um, the other uh, priest is played by Andrew Garfield, who, of course, played um, Eduardo Saverin in The Social Network and um, Peter Parker in two recent, relatively recent Spider-Man movies. <clears throat> Um, he is, uh, Father Rodrigo. Excuse me. Uh, just collecting myself here. Like I said, I've been awake for about maybe half an hour thinking about this movie and uh, wanting to say a couple things, so this isn't the best time to talk about it, but I just, like, wanted to get it out. <clears throat> um, so what they, what happens in the uh, beginning of this movie is they're at home, and they, um, speak with their, um, superior, uh, priest who's their superior who says just received word uh, about uh, Father Ferreira. We've been out of contact with him for years. But it turns out he has apostatized meaning that in his duty in uh, bringing Christianity to the villages of uh, Japan um, he has uh, renounced his faith and said no I'm not a Christian anymore. Mm -mm, not for me anymore. And um, the two uh, priests that he tells us to, they just can't believe it. This man was a mentor to them, you know, he taught them so much about their faith, uh, and they're just like, this is just, I don't believe this at all. All of it, it's slander, you know, it's just, it's a complete lie. They're just trying to, you know, discourage us. We need to go to Japan and find him, and, and, and ascertain what's really happened, and, and, and bring him back if necessary, you know? Um, there's a very telling, uh, moment early on in the movie, in which their superior, who's played by, um, I, I have a hard time pronouncing his name, Syrian Hins. Um, he's been in a lot of different movies, but uh, um, he, he's got kind of a small part just in the beginning of the film, where he says to them, um, is this what's truly in your heart? And they go, yes, absolutely. We, we, we must go to Japan and find Father Ferreira. And he says, then we must trust that God has put it there. Um, very telling moment. Um, what happens uh, over the course of uh, the story is that one of the priests, Father Rodrigo, the Adam uh, Garfield character, really sort of becomes the main character. It isn't just a two-hander uh, throughout the, uh, the film. He more or less is the main character. And he begins to um, <laughs> worry about the fact that he doesn't actually get word back from God when he prays. The silence of the title is the silence that... Uh, most Christians get um, <laughs> when they pray. They don't get an, uh, an answer back that they can hear or see. Um, they have to have faith that they know what the right answer is or that God is putting something in their heart. Something that I have sort of, uh, you know, sort of concluded uh, over the years is that people who think that they're uh, understanding what God wants from them, they are basically taking what they have 
read in the Bible and what they've been taught by others about what God wants and everything like that, and drawing a conclusion about what he wants because they can't actually know because they're not actually hearing it from him, not unless they're, you know, an actual prophet. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so that's a, a bit of a struggle after a while, because once they arrive in Japan, um, these villagers, they don't have anything. You know, they are very, very poor. They live in these ramshackle huts. They struggle for food. They struggle, you know, just to kind of keep going from day to day. And what they really have for them right now is their faith. You know, these priests have come... Uh, from uh, other countries to Japan and said, hey, guess what, you know, whatever re religion you believe, you know, Buddhism or whatever, you know, it's not actually the religion here. Here's this person called Jesus and let's tell you about him and you need to wash away your sins. So when the two priests, played by Adam Driver and um, uh, uh, Andrew Garfield, uh, arrive in Japan, they're greeted by people who are just desperate because... Um, people have been going around, you know, the um, the authorities in Japan, the, you know, the religious authorities have been going out and demanding that everyone, you know, renounce Christianity. And they're like, you know, we have had no priests here in ages. You know, we've managed to perform a baptism or two, but we, you know, don't know enough to, you know, hear confession and have our sins washed away. And we need priests to have our sins washed away. We need to take communion and, and have our confessions heard and what have you. You know, they're just like so desperate for uh, that that reassurance. Um, so, uh, the plot very quickly changes from, um, uh, Gar Garfield and Driver, um, looking for Liam Neeson's character, and Ferrara, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that Liam Neeson plays, uh, uh, Father Ferrara, and, uh, Ferrara, sorry, and, uh, it goes from them looking for him to them tending to the religious needs of these small little villages here in Japan while hiding, uh, from the persecutors, uh, who insists that no Japanese people here uh, can be Christian? You know they're they're stomping out Christianity. Um, so they perform baptisms, they hear confessions while hiding and everything like that. But eventually, of course, the authorities do cotton to the fact that there are a couple of uh, uh, priests, Catholic priests, who are here in their country, and they you know are uh, <laughs> are. Uh, putting their Christian influence on the villagers again, and so they start demanding that people apostatize. And they do this with a very simple thing. This becomes a really big deal throughout the course of the movie. They have this graven image of Jesus. Basically, it's like a metal plate with Jesus' image stamped in it. They place it down in front of a person who they believe to be Christian, and they say, look, you know, here's what you got to do. Just take your foot and step on this picture of Jesus, you know? You don't have to do it hard. You don't have to stomp on it. You can press very lightly on it, okay? But in so doing, you are renouncing Christian faith. You are renouncing Jesus. You are declaring to all of us who are here watching you step on this picture of Jesus that you are not a Christian. You don't believe Jesus is your Savior. So... Go ahead and do it, right? And the penalty for not doing this, of course, is you get tortured, uh, you get your head cut off, you get strung up on a cross and um, placed out, you know, near the water where the uh, tide will s smash into you over and over again, you know. And people, you know, who are super devoted, they, you know, won't give up, won't step on that picture of Jesus, won't make that simple gesture. They end up suffering greatly over the course of days, you know, before they eventually die. There's this one character who... Uh, is a Japanese man who uh, apostatized years ago, you know, his f whole family to convert to Christianity. And when it was demanded that he, you know, make that gesture, step on that, that picture of Jesus, he did it, you know, he did it because he didn't want the suffering and pain of torture, what have you. And after he did that, his entire family was put to death. So he's not happy about that. He's really upset. But the two priests, they say to him, you know, you can you can renew your faith. You know God will forgive you for sins as long as you're truly remorseful. As long as you you know, uh, as long as you really really you know are, are going to be a devoted Christian from here on out. You know, um, but you know things don't stay you know stable for long at any moment in this film. And I gotta say this is a pretty tough watch. Um, this movie isn't quite as long as Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street is like three hours, and this one's like more like two and a half. But it's not 
entertaining in the way that most of Scorsese's other movies are, with the music and with the really, you know, uh, dynamic camera moves and the flashy editing. You know, Thelma Schoonmaker, who has edited, you know, almost all of Scorsese's pictures, uh, is still the editor uh, of this movie as well. But, you know, I mean, this style really dictates something a lot more sort of severe and and non-flashy and, and it doesn't make it easy for you. You know, it's not easy for the characters what they're going through. And there isn't a lot of violence in this movie. I mean, there's some, you see people suffer and uh, there's some, you know, bits of sudden bloody violence. But for the most part, the, the really excruciating part comes from when these people are told you must do this, you know, or your suffering will prolong or other people's suffering will pro prolong. You know, if they can't get you to apostatize by threatening you with pain, they'll threaten the people around you with pain. You know, it's like all these people around you, you know, they're going to they're going to suffer, you know, they're going to be hung upside down and that's very painful. They're going to be drowned, they're going to be this that and the other thing burned with hot water, you know. All you have to do to stop it is step on this picture of Jesus, just that. Just step on that, and, and it's over with. You can save all these people, all this hardship and pain. And for a person who is, like, really devoted to Jesus, really believes that Jesus is their Savior, and thinks that stepping on him and publicly renouncing him is a really, really bad offense against God and against Jesus, that's a tough decision to make. That's a really tough decision, because on the one hand, you could say, well, all those people that have accepted Jesus and suffer and die, well, they'll be taken care of because they're going to heaven. But still, <laughs> i got to stand here and watch them suffer. That's tough. That's really tough. Um, and so, you know, it goes on like that. It goes on like that throughout the whole movie. Um, the hiding, the, the, the trying to, you know, not uh, uh, be discovered, you know. But then you have these, these sequences where um, the people who are, you know, secretly practic practicing the Christian faith are confronted with this choice. It happens again and again during this movie. All these different characters who are, who are trying to secretly, you know, uh, uh, practice their Christian faith are being given this, this impossible choice to make. And for some, it's easy. In fact, it, 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 at one point, um, Andrew Garfield and Adam Driver say to some people, look, these people are going to ask you to do it, you know, to step on that picture. And I want you to go ahead and do it, but just keep Jesus in your heart, right? Just, you know, Jesus will understand. He'll understand. Just go ahead. Because they don't want to see these people suffer and die either. They, they say, it's okay if you publicly say you're not a Christian, as long as you stay a Christian in here and in here. You know, but still, it's tough. It's a tough thing to ask <laughs> any of these people. And it's very, it would be very easy for a lot of us who are sitting here in our nice, comfortable movie theaters and in our nice, comfortable homes in front of our big screen TVs to go, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, I really wish they wouldn't apostatize because, you know, that's a bad thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. It's a tough thing. And this isn't the same Scorsese, you know, who makes the really entertaining um, uh, 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 movies about gangsters shooting each other and all kinds of flashy violence. You know, this is The Last Temptation of Christ, uh, Scorsese. Um, but the power that Scorsese has is making you care about this stuff. You know, even if you're not a believer, if you're not a religious person, it's really hard not to care about what's happening uh, to these people and this choice that they have to make. All these characters have to make this choice uh, throughout the picture, and it really, really is, is tough. It's tough. Um, Scorsese, man. You know, I mean, I... Uh, I, I, I won't lie to you, I, I felt uncomfortable a lot during this picture, physically uncomfortable, you know, I mean, it's a long time to sit in the theater, um, I had to, you know, readjust my position, my seat, frequently, you know, just to sort of, you know, stay alert, you know, um, and to, and to just, it, it, it's hard to describe, really, but, uh, it was, it's not an easy film to sit through, but, it still is a real testament to Scorsese's ability, his powers of filmmakers, to get you to, to care very deeply about these people and these choices that they have to make. Um, I think there might have been more than I wanted to say about this film right now. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no music in the movie. I didn't... Uh, I didn't... Um, I, I forgot to look for credit for the score, but I'm pretty sure there's absolutely no score in all this movie. There certainly aren't any pop songs. <laughs> this takes place in the 1600s. He's not anachronistic like that. Um, one name that jumped out at me in the credits, and I don't know who the, char the character is. I was going to look it up, but I wanted to make this video right away, so forgive me for not looking up before I make the video. Um, probably include it in the description below, or maybe 
um, a tag, you know, one of those um, little um, uh, annotations. Um, but a name, a Japanese name that, you know, really stood out amongst the credits was Shinya Sukamoto. And Shinya Sukamoto is the director of the Tetsuo movies, which are a trilogy of Japanese movies that couldn't be further away from the style of this movie. It involved, they're, they're basically horror movies in which people spontaneously grow machine parts out of their bodies. They're really stylistically extreme. They're just fascinating and kind of fun, actually. Just just crazy, crazy movies. It's like, you know, if uh, if Sam Raimi ended up making, you know, um, uh, uh, move, you know Japanese movies, he'd probably, you know, make movies like that. Uh, you know, from you know, I'm talking about like Evil Dead, uh, Sam Raimi. Anyway, um, I think he might have played like the Supreme Inquisitor. You know, the Inquisitor who's like leading the whole you know stomp out Christianity movement. Because you know, Andrew Garfield eventually meets that character, and they have sort of a war of metaphors where they talk about you know how Christianity is bad for Japan, or how it's good for Japan, or how it's good for the people of Japan, and you know, uh, and, and you know, so there's this whole sort of um, campaign going on where um, the Inquisitor is trying to not only, you know, get all the uh, uh, Japanese people, his fellow countrymen, to apostatize, but also Andrew Garfield as well. So you just know that at a certain point in this movie, Andrew Garfield's going to have to stand in front of a, you know, small, you know, metal picture of Jesus and go, should I step on this or not? You know, there's people being tortured all around me. Should I do it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a tough movie. It is a tough movie. But um, yeah, it's um, it's a pretty pretty fantastic, pretty fantastic film. Yeah. Uh, so if you think you can endure it, definitely see it. Definitely go look for it because it's it's powerful stuff. Really powerful. Um, as you can see by the title, this is the latest entry in my Scorsese series, and I might get around to doing a video about Wolf of Wall Street one day. But honestly, I really don't care that much about that movie. I really don't. Um, so consider that my review of Wolf of Wall Street. You know, it's entertaining, it's fun, but ultimately, you know, I don't like it. <laughs> just in the end, I, I just don't like it that much. Sorry. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, my uh, action movie series, uh, in case you weren't aware of that, is going to continue on Friday with Sam Peck and Paz the Wild Bunch. So I hope you'll uh, stick with me for that. Catch you later. Bye.